My name is Blaine Anthony Archer. I'm 27 years old and I am a professional chef. My hobbies are playing basketball, playing the drums, cooking, and spending time with my family. I've been doing this professionally for nine years now, but if you'd like to be a little more specific, I've been cooking since I was 11 or 12 years old. So, a little background story on why I got into culinary and cooking. My mom got injured and she actually did a lot of catering on the side. Uh, so she broke her leg and she had some food that needed to be prepared. Uh, and instead of saying, hey, no, she can't do it anymore. I just stepped up to the plate and said, you know what, mom, I've seen you do it a lot. So let me take it. Let me take the lead on this and take control. And I cooked the food and then the people loved it. So I'm just like, oh, I guess I could do this. A lot of people always ask what keeps me motivated. My family, the people around me, cooking for others and seeing the smile on their face, and God. So a lot of people take different routes to get to where I am today. I actually went to George Brown uh, and I graduated there with a degree in culinary management. It was a two-year course, uh, but I also worked in the industry at many different places before that. I did my placement at Earl's. I was there for five years. And then my general manager that worked there, he actually got hired with the company that I work for today. And he gave me a call and he said, hey buddy, uh, there's an opportunity here out west. Um, they're looking for someone that can be remote. And it was actually me and another gentleman, uh, one of my closest friends that actually got the job as well. And we traveled the whole world, uh, the whole United States, if you want to say that. Opening restaurants for a year and then uh, that role was coming to an end. Not really coming to an end, but they let go of a few people. And they said, hey Blaine, there's a restaurant in Toronto that needs some work. If you want to take over, you can, it's all yours. Uh, I was there for three months. And then I got transferred to the busiest location in this company. In order to work in this field, I always say that you need to have tough skin. You need to have good memory because the menus are always changing. You can't be looking in a recipe book while you're cooking for people out there. Uh, you need to be able to work in a fast paced environment and you need to have great people skills because there's gonna be people around you from all different places of the world. And the worst thing that you wanna do working in the kitchen is not be in agreement with the people online because at the end of the day, you guys are all working together as a collective unit to make one dish for the people out there. And that's all that matters the most. My favorite part about working in this career is that I get to make food for people and I get to see the smiles on their faces after they eat it. Uh, my least favorite part, I don't really have a least favorite part because I love what I do. To be honest, there's always going to be obstacles in your way. Uh, a lot of them are, this, this industry is very competitive. There's always people always looking for work, always trying to make it to the top. But one thing I'll tell the young and up and coming chefs is once you're motivated and once you have the urge and you're always ready to go, then you'll always make it to the top before everyone else. So a day in the life of me, my life, you know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of different. So I wake up in the morning, say my prayer, I brush my teeth, you know, the usual. Uh, and then I look at my phone for the shift notes from the night before. So, because I don't close, my restaurant closes at 2 a.m., but I'm usually there. I work two revenue periods. So basically what we call revenue periods is uh, lunch and dinner. So the restaurants are usually busy between lunch, like I said, and dinner. So we call it two different revenue periods. So you have the 11 to four, and then you have the, that's what we call lunch, and then you have the five to eight. And then you have the late night crew, but that's not really a revenue. That's just the late night stragglers, as I would call them. So I wake up in the morning. Uh, I do my usual routine, read the shift notes, and then I get ready for work. I live in Pickering, and then I drive downtown. Uh, I actually, if anyone wants to know where I work right now, I work at the Elephant and Castle on King Street. I'm the kitchen partner there. 
but I also oversee a couple other restaurants for my company, like State of Maine and Pickering and State of Maine and Whippy. Uh, so I get there at 10 and I check in with all the guys that are there in the morning and say, hey, how's everything doing? I just, I like to, my team is like a family. So I, I make a relationship with my team. So I check in and see how they're doing. Uh, we get ready for lunch. Lunch usually starts at around 11.45. Uh, we pump that out. Uh, I don't really do a lot of the cooking. I'm usually just an overseer, making sure the plates are good, checking in with guests, walking around, making sure everyone's having a good time. Uh, and then I come back, uh, pump all that out. And then after lunch, we get ready for dinner now. So I make sure that the line is ready. We do temp checks. Now with COVID being around, it's a little bit more stuff that you have to do. So you have to do line checks, you have to do temp checks, you have to make sure the chemicals are good. You have to make sure the product's good, making sure sanitation, everything's good. So we do, we just reset the line again, making sure that all the product is ready for the night people. Uh, Cause one thing about restaurants is you wanna make sure that you're being very consistent and you're, if someone came in yesterday uh, in the morning, I want, you, I want to make sure that you're getting the same meal in the night. Uh, we're not, I don't work for a company that changes meals every day. Uh, I work for a company that sends us the stuff and we just pump it out. So consistency is the key to success is that's what I tell everyone. Uh, so I'm usually at the restaurant until seven or eight. Uh, after that, I'll write my shift notes. Uh, so how the shift went, just in case any manager that wasn't there in the morning, they can see what happened based on the notes. If anything went wrong, if I'm not in there for the next day, maybe I'll write stuff so that they can say, hey, this is what needs to be done. This is what chef needs done for the next day. If anyone's coming in early in the morning, everyone could see it. Uh, and then I would usually set my team up for the next day. So write the prep list, what needs to be done. If I see anything, we call 911s. I mean, something that could, we could have ran out of in the night, we write 911s on the board so that whoever's there in the morning, they know, hey, this is what needs to be done first. Uh, after that, I would usually either take some time for myself, uh, unwind a bit, or I go see my girlfriend, go play basketball, go have rehearsals for some stuff. But other than that, I'm just spending time with my family at that point. Uh, and then I'll just unwind down and call it a night. That's a day in the life. Some of my long-term career goals within this company that I currently work at, I want to be a regional kitchen manager. Uh, a lot of people take different paths. Some people want to become general managers. It's not for me. After this, after I finish here, uh, I actually have a dream to own the first, uh, what do you call it, fine dining food truck. Uh, I feel like it's just something different. I can bring different things to the world and that's all it's about, right? Reaching new people, giving people something that they've never had before. Uh, and that's what will keep you uh, in the restaurant industry. So my girlfriend, she begs to differ. She'd probably say I don't really I'm not really too strong with this. I, I do think, I think I am. I still make time for her. But uh, work-life balance, working in this in this particular industry is very hard because you don't have end times. You can, I can't say I'll be done at seven and actually be done by seven because who knows, maybe the rush started a little bit later and you don't just get up and it's not like a nine to five where you can clock in and clock out because there's nothing else to do or you can finish it the next day. If there's guests in the building, they need to eat. They're coming to the restaurant to eat. So and I'm not one of those guys that are going to leave my team behind. So it's very, sometimes it's sticky uh, when you make plans, but uh, I come with the family and I come with the, I have a support system around me that understands uh, what I do and understands what I'm working towards. And they're very supportive, supportive. Uh, so my work-life balance is pretty good. I have two days off a week. I have Usually before COVID, I have two weekends off. Uh, I get my Sabbath off, which is great. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty pretty satisfied with my work-life balance. I'm inspired by my family. 
each day they push me forward. They tell me, hey, you can do it. And that's all I need. My family and to know that there's someone watching over me, that's about it. So anyone that wants to get into this field, I'll tell you this. It's not easy. It's not, it's not slow. This job will always be around because people will always need food. But once you believe in yourself and understand what it takes to make it to the top, then anyone can make it. I said it before and I'll say it again. All you have to do is reach for the stars and nothing else. Leave everything behind you, be yourself, and we can all get there together.